Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for February 18th, 2022. Well, doggone it, those bears really had their way with the market yesterday as the tensions between Russia and Ukraine continue to grow. What does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, let's get ready for the Friday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Boy, we sure have some technical problems here in our charts, and I'm sure a lot of folks are kind of getting tired of all of this selling and uncertainty in the market, but I'm afraid it may continue um, in through today. Let's take a look at these technicals and see if we can gain some information about how we might want to approach the market for today. First off, I want to point out that we continue to move in this downtrend. And although we had just a brief uh, glimmer of hope of breaking that downtrend, we have now confirmed a lower high here in the market. And the good news on this side of, the th of side of things is that we are still holding above some price support in the chart. This may be a little bit difficult to hold um, this uh, heading into a long weekend with this uncertainty um, between Russia and Ukraine. But let's watch that closely. If we happen to rally and we're trying to get a little bit of push up this morning here, just a little rebound after that heavy selling yesterday, just keep in mind, we have significant price resistance levels in the chart that we're going to have to breach. And I'm just not sure we're going to get enough energy today with a light day of earnings, um, a light day on the economic calendar to provide inspiration for the market. But you never know. So watch that closely. I do also think that there is a substantial possibility that heading into this long weekend, um, we could test some lows. It'll be really difficult for uh, the bulls to defend um, this three-day weekend, but you never know. Uh, they might be able to find something to uh, grab onto in a new cycle or something like that to help us out. So watch that close. Um, I gotta say, um, you know, another failure here at the 200 day moving average. Notice our 34 exponential moving average is just about right across down through that 200 day, creating just, a, you know, a, a level of resistance in here that's pretty darn substantial. And that 50 day moving average is turning lower here as well. Um, so pretty ugly here here uh, on the technicals of the Dow chart. If we take a look at the SPY, unfortunately things don't improve much here. Notice that we uh, we tried a couple of times to break through um, this resistance level in the chart, um, just not able to hold it. We confirmed a lower high yesterday following through to the downside, but we are still holding on to some price support. Um, again, pretty much the same as the Dow. If we can find a little bit of bullishness, watch these resistance levels in the chart here today and it wouldn't be a big surprise I think heading into an uncertain weekend that we could even test lower and it may be uh, it may be a tough task today for the bulls to defend uh, some of these lows and that possibility we could sink down into this level our technicals on the spy are really not much better we did have a brief dalliance where we pushed above that 200 day moving average but now we have officially failed that um, we just haven't confirmed a new low yet so a lower high um, we need that lower low to just kind of confirm uh, the overall downtrend but notice our technicals here are in pretty rough shape here in, in this chart. If we take a look at our NASDAQ, our NASDAQ uh, is really even worse. Um, our NASDAQ continues to move in this downtrend. And although we had that little brief hope that we were going to break back up through here, just couldn't get her done. Um, and now we have failed here at price resistance. And um, we have, a, I think, a rather high probability that we would test this low before getting much of a rally back to the upside. But, you know, if we can find some reason to, to grab on 
to something here today uh, bullish then we have that chance that we could rally up here maybe test some resistance in the chart right in there so watch that closely now our technicals here um, are certainly bearish um, in the NASDAQ we have that 34 EMA crossing down through the 200 um, notice our shorter term averages are continuing to put pressure here on the downside of the chart and you can see that 50-day moving average is diving toward that 200-day pretty quickly here in the NASDAQ and then if we take a look at our Russell Russell <laughs> surprisingly has been one of the stronger of the indexes here although it is still in a substantial downtrend here in the chart with a massive amount of price resistance above so there's really nothing in this chart that I can point to as particular bullishness this was just a little bit more of an oversold uh, bounce um, in in this chart and if you look at this closely you might you might recognize this as a possibility of a bear flag uh, forming here in the chart if we were to continue to see some selling in here uh, that could be a problem for the Russell so watch that closely let's take a quick look at our VIX now our VIX um, pushed back up yesterday and I've been uh, talking about this little upside trend keep an eye on that upside trend and we um, you know tried to try to break it here earlier in the week tried to break that down but boy we just couldn't couldn't hold on to it so as you can see pushing back up here in that chart uh, 28 handles on the VIX which means if you're an option trader particularly um, option um, option prices are pretty high implied volatility is very high and we c we're seeing that in the price action of the chart with um, you know a healthy market doesn't move 500 points up and 600 points down on a regular basis so we're seeing that pretty regularly with a lot of whipsaws a lot of false um, breakouts so be really really careful here and heading into this weekend it might be difficult the uncertainty that we see here in the market with the Ukrainian situation could certainly push that higher so just be really really careful here today and then if we take a look at our t2122 now our t2122 pulled back pretty substantially yesterday but unfortunately it did not reach the uh, bullish reversal zone yet as a matter of fact we still have quite a ways that we could fall here in that t2122 before we reach that reversal zone down here so um uncertain weekend ahead um, it would certainly kind of um, lean that direction i think however um the bulls have been fighting pretty hard and um if we can find something to grab onto bullishly then we certainly have plenty of upside room that we've created uh for that move back up so watch for both sides we can never rule out that possibility but you know the uncertainty of this weekend could play a pretty heavy role i think it'll be a big task for those bulls to defend today not impossible but um, a big task and then if we take a look at our t2108 t2108 i, I gotta continue to give this one up to the bulls i'm uh, rather surprised yesterday in that selling that we held up pretty darn well here in the stocks holding above their 40-day moving average and you can see holding on to this little bit of a trend now certainly we have a lot of resistance above here in this chart and we are still in a downtrend but it's held up better than expected we'll see if they can hold on to that today um, and keep some of those stocks from slipping about 33 percent of our stocks above the 40-day moving average our t2107 didn't fare quite as well but um, it is it is um, holding up overall notice we've got a bit of an upside trend here and again both of these patterns in t2108 and t21 
um, 07 look pretty much like bear flags forming. Um, and we've got price resistance above here in the chart and um, downtrend still in place. So that possibility of a bear flag does exist here in that chart. But, you know, I'm going to give this uh, just a little bit of credit to the bulls. They've been holding on better than I would have expected with that selling yesterday. 31% um, of our stocks holding above the 200 day moving average. So it's clearly not a bullish situation. But um, at least they're they're showing a little bit of tenacity and a willing to, willingness to defend. Let's take a look at our T2101. T2101 continues to be just a little bit on the baffling side. And I think one of the reasons we're seeing this is volumes have been relatively weak. It's like folks are just saying, they're just packing up and calling it a week, I guess, um, in the market because volumes have been relatively light. But it's interesting in here on the absolute market breadth that we are are pushing down into this uh, low area, which really suggests a big move could be coming. And I can't tell you if that will be an upside move that pushes us up here, or if we see that uh, big selling move um, in the market to really spike that market breadth. Whatever you think might occur, I would just be really careful going into this long weekend. So watch that close. And then let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar um, has a you know, just a few things here we want to pay attention to today. Remember, um, yesterday's data was not very, uh, well, was pretty doggone nasty. Um, um, it's really beginning to show us in some of these um, um, economic reports that our economy is beginning to slow. Um, now, we can certainly recover from that, but certainly there are some problems here as these uh, data points continue to weaken. So watch this one here, existing home sales. That could be an interesting one today. We know our um, consensus is suggesting existing home sales uh, decline um, pretty substantially here. Um, today, but if they were to decline even sharper than that, that could have negative effects on the market. Of course, if it can hold in there um, around that expectation, um, should be pretty good shape. Now, keep in mind after that, we have uh, quite a few Fed speakers and we know as those Fed speakers continue to come out, we know what they're headed for. We know what they're planning on doing. So I don't know that we'll learn anything more, but you'll want to pay attention to those because we are rather sensitive to um, this idea of um, rate increases and how much they're going to uh, move forward with on those increases. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar today. Now our earnings calendar is quite light um, actually. We'll want to keep a close, uh, a close eye on that. Uh, but because there are a couple things in there notable that could move us around a little bit. But we've got um, only, um, let's see, less than 30, um, I believe, companies um, on the calendar here today. And a good number of them um, are unconfirmed reports. So there's not very many notables today. Let's take a quick look. We've got DKNG that uh, reporting this morning, it looks like it's getting thumped on here uh, this morning after its report. We've got um, ABR uh, reporting today, so keep an eye on that. Um, Barnes will be reporting today, watch that one closely. Um, Blumen reporting today, looks like they're getting a nice little bounce here this morning um, on Blumen, so um, a positive report there. Um, we've got John Deere reporting today, and they have already reported and looks like just kind of a ho-hum reaction here to that report this morning. So watch that closely. And if we take a look at PPL, PPL is the last notable I've put on the chart uh, or put on the list for today. And obviously not looking too good there on PPL um, in the pre-market. Um, kind of keep in mind our, our big tech yesterday, um, uh, Roku also disappointed pretty substantially yesterday. That's looking lower. So 
um, our tech stocks continue to just suffer uh, pretty substantially, and, and that's created that pretty nasty-looking chart there in the NASDAQ. So um, keep a close eye on those. Let's take a look um, at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me a quick favor. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be worthy, if you could please click those thumbs up buttons, leave a brief comment, and even share these videos out on your social media feed. That helps a ton. And I got to say, um, yesterday there were just some comments yesterday that were um, so kind and, and so nice. I, I got to tell you, I really do appreciate um, everyone who does support the channel. Um, you humble me every day, honestly. Um, you humble me every day with your kind words. And I never in my wildest dreams would have um, thought um, this kind of non-predictive content um, uh, on the market would gain um, um, that kind of appreciation. So thank you so much, guys. I truly appreciate it. And um, if you want to support this kind of content, not a member of Hit and Run Candlesticks or Right Way Options and would like to support this content, you have the opportunity to do so just by clicking that Buy Me a Coffee link below the title of the video, and you can help support the channel that way. And thank you so much for everyone who has done that. Let's take a look at a few charts that could be setting up, and I'm still going to be recommending kind of a mix of stocks. But I have to tell you guys, I would be a little bit careful here um, heading into this weekend. Um, I think for me personally, I'm going to likely be moving more toward cash um, heading into this weekend because we just don't know what might happen over the three-day weekend in this Ukrainian-Russia um, uh, conflict kind of sparking up and uh, crossfire started to happen and issues going on there. So I'm going to be a little bit cautious here going into the weekend and take some profits. I've got some nice short trades that I'm really up in. I'm talking 80% profits in some of these short trades. And so I may be taking some of those profits and just kind of um, relaxing uh, this weekend and we'll see what happens here. Let's take a look at um, some stocks that are looking pretty good, however. Uh, you might want to take a look at some of the gold stocks. Um, take a look at like a GDX as a gold miner really shooting up here. As you can see, gold has um, enjoyed a tremendous rally here recently. Now, the, uh, gold has just been really problematic with a lot of volatility in it. Um, um, which is surprising considering the state of the market, but watch that carefully. We're seeing a lot of these um, miners, Newmont Mining, um, Barry Gold, um, AUY, a lot of them are looking very, very strong. And if you take a look at GLD itself, it's broken through substantial levels of price resistance. Now, I wouldn't want to chase any of these stocks. As a matter of fact, what I'd want is to see a little resting consolidation or pullback to provide um, an opportunity into those trades. If you're already in them, congratulations, you're looking good. But I don't think I would want to chase it right here. Um, Another place you might want to look is over here in um, the silver um, area. Silver has improved pretty substantially, pushing up through some resistance levels. Now, you do want to keep in mind that we still have this downtrend here um, in the chart. So the fact that it's pushed up again, I don't want to chase anything, but a rest or consolidation in here that holds a higher low could certainly set up an opportunity in silver. So keep a close eye on that. And if you're looking other places, take a look at um, a copper. Copper has been holding up pretty well here. You can see a nice little move consolidating resting pattern here in that chart. Now certainly we have a fairly substantial resistance level in that chart up here. But as we continue to hold this support area in the chart, I think there is that opportunity that we could see this push on through to the upside. It may need a little bit more rest out here. I wouldn't be surprised if this has to consolidate a while longer, but I would watch that chart 
chart for that upside opportunity. It's looking pretty good overall. Um, a chart that I have a little bit of a bias on that finally made a move um, yesterday was um, a Mo. I'm actually holding this position in Mo. Um, we have this nice little downtrend here that we have breached and we have proven at least at this point to hold um, that chart in it this is a defensive sector stock so it's one of those places where folks might run for a little bit of security in an uncertain market with a big strong dividend yield here on that chart so keep an eye on um, Altria here um, looking pretty good um, overall in that chart other places that in that defensive sector we're seeing uh, things like Philip Morris uh, remain very, very strong. Um, Con Agra um, showing some bullishness here and trying to break out. Con Agra, anything in the food, ag, commodities area has been extremely strong. Take a look at like the commodity tracking ETF. Um, oh, now all of, all of a sudden, it, um, DBX. No, DBX, no, DBC, I'm sorry. Um, little senior moment there. DBC, keep an eye on that. Um, this has just been chugging up um, a beautiful upside trend. And we um, saw some stories here recently in the news that farmers and ranchers are experiencing um, substantial, substantial inflation impacts. And I would expect food prices to continue to move up uh, because all of those impacts out there uh, uh, with their energy, with their fertilizer, everything is impacting those costs. So keep an eye on some of those. I even saw a little bit of uh, uh, Kroger trying to make a, a move up yesterday, which was interesting because overall this chart is actually showing a little bit of bearishness, as you can see here in the chart, that possible head and shoulders top. So you know um just keep a close eye on this this is one of those that i think could fail and could be a potential short a lot of pressure um, on uh, grocery um, stocks right now as those prices continue to rise and they're kind of the end um in place where um well they have to suffer the impacts of all of those price raises so watch those closely you might take a look at some of these casinos i've mentioned this before um they're continuing to try and hold in here i'm seeing a little bit of downside here in pin this morning in the pre-market but watch those they are still holding up in pretty good patterns if you take a look at um, wing casinos if you take a look at lvs they're holding in there and looking pretty good um, in charts so if you're looking for a little bit of a safety play that might be a place to look in those charts um, you might want to um, also keep um, an eye on some of the airlines um, airlines have enjoyed a pretty substantial rally here um, if breaking through some resistance levels need a little rest or support um, those are starting to perk up with the relaxation of all of the covid restrictions around the country and around the world um, they're starting to enjoy some enthusiasm people getting out and trying to travel so watch that carefully i do have a little bit of concern about this just because because our consumer is so strained right now um, that I'm not really sure uh, the bullishness in these will be warranted if the inflation impacts continue to happen. Consumer debt is hitting record highs. And, and although that we saw retail sales coming in with a 3.8% um, um, increase this week, um, that is not inflation adjusted. And as a matter of fact, there was a Wall Street Journal um, article about that, suggesting that about 60%, 60 percent, 60 percent of the um, retail sales will just be the increased costs that people are having to spend on products. Uh, what we actually saw in that number, um, an unseasonally adjusted number in retail sales fell 18.5%. Um, so this was the seasonally the seasonal adjustment that they made in those retail sales numbers 
was the largest on record. So, uh, you know, not surprising the government's trying to um, uh, massage those numbers pretty hard, but just be kind of careful here. And I think that may um, say some of these travel stocks may have a little bit more trouble ahead than a lot of people is, expect if the consumer stays stressed like that. So watch those closely. So with that, guys, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, again, be kind of careful and cautious heading into this long weekend. Anything is possible. I would expect quite a little bit of volatility today um, and very a very sensitive market to um, those geopolitical news cycle things that come through any fire uh, crossfire starting to happen anything going on there and the market will probably be extremely sensitive to that so with that everyone have an awesome day and more importantly i want to wish you all a fantastic three-day weekend we'll see you back here bright and early next tuesday i wish you all the best